Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Celebrating Act 2. Art. Who's that guy that's sitting between us? Who's Who's that handsome devil from Hollywood in the middle? I don't know. Uh, it must be Manny Pacheco. I know because oh yeah, his name is underneath him. I was just, I had to get around, the, look around the camera to see his name. Hey, uh, Manny. Don't you just love live television? I know. <laughs> so, so speaking of uh, uh, live television, uh, I think that today we should go with dealer's choice. Okay, we don't really have a topic. We don't have like, you know, uh, uh, the best boat captains uh, of... Uh, early Hollywood or uh, the greatest circus show or something. So why don't, why don't, you, why don't you pick something, pick a topic and, and expound contemporaneously well, on it. I'll tell you what we're not going to pick is the circus topic, that's for sure. <laughs> oh. I, was, I was just clowning around. I get it. Yeah. Uh, I know that one of the favorite character actors uh, that, that John just loves to uh, watch, eminently watch whenever he's on, on, on uh, television on one of the old movie channels, is Peter Lorre. Am I mm-hmm. right about that? Peter Lorre, yes. yes. He had, a, he had a wonderful way of talking, didn't he? Yes, he was, did. Was he, did he have a foreign accent? I never knew what that was, but he just... Well, he was unique, and he was from Hungary... And he was one of the many famous uh, actors and filmmakers who emigrated from Hungary uh, out of uh, out of the way of the uh, blitzkrieg that was coming because of the the fascist tendencies that were going on in Germany that involved, of course, Adolf Hitler. And uh, and we're the better for it because we were able to then uh, grab him in Hollywood and and, uh, get got to see what a great talent he was. And uh, he was this little menacing looking guy with a funny voice that was easy to cast and the first person who noticed his work and wanted to put him in a movie was Alfred Hitchcock one of Alfred Hitchcock's first movies yeah it was I think it was one of his first British talkies and uh so so Peter Laurie was able to um follow Alfred Hitchcock uh into the movie and and movies and, and he did very very well uh, his first breakout role in the United States was as a villain in the movie M. And if you've never seen this movie, boy, talk about a real creepy movie about a, a child killer. And, really? and, and, and for its time, it's pre-code, obviously, uh, so they could get away with a, a little bit more. They were actually pretty graphic in, in, in what they were trying to convey, although they never really showed anything. But, I mean, you really got the message that this guy was about as creepy as it gets. And M was his first, um, his first real foray into um, American filmmaking, and, and he did a really, really nice job with that. So he now, did he, he always... He wasn't playing the heavy there. He, he was a, a, a key character? He was the star, but he was the heavy, yeah, and he but, was a coward on top of everything else, yeah. But, yeah. okay. Did he always play, uh, was his career filled with only character, actor, uh, heavies, and things like that? Well, he could play the heavy very effortlessly, and, of course, uh, different studios could use him. Universal, of course, could find great work for 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 an actor like that but somehow he ended up falling in he got lucky although in, in a stereotyped kind of way because of his look was so unique that for a time he was able to play the uh the, the chinese sleuth mr moto and oh. uh which is kind of like a charlie chan type of sure of, yeah well film. that's before hey, Asians were ever allowed to play Asians that's right, right. Raymond, that's exactly Burr, right. Raymond Burr used to play uh uh, an mm-hmm. Asian. Yeah, you know, uh, 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 Sidney Toller and Warner Olaf, who were anything but Asian, were Char- Charlie Chan, and and the other actor who was notable for playing Mr. Moto was was the British Boris Karloff. So, I mean, what does that tell you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so for a time, you know, he was very comfortable in playing, um, uh, you know, a sleuth, albeit it was a very exotic sleuth in Mr. Moto, but he ended up um, falling in real closely with the Warner Brothers group, and particularly he developed a keen friendship with Sidney Greenstreet uh, that started when they made the movie uh, The Maltese Falcon, and all of a sudden what 
he turned from a heavy to kind of a comedic heavy. And he could be found to do some very funny uh, things uh, because of his look, because of his voice. Uh, and, and and he was able to play opposite people like uh, who bec he became very close with, by the way, Humphrey Bogart, really good pals. And his really? other really close pal was Vincent Price. But the but the but the screen pairing of Sidney Greenstreet and Peter Laurie turned out to be the moneymaker for Warner Brothers. Jack Warner just saw a real value between the two, and he would single them out as stars. So all of a sudden, yeah, they were still playing characters, but they were the starring roles of those characters as film noir and, and a lot of these uh, wartime dramas and intrigue emerged. When they were paired for Casablanca, all bets were off. All of a sudden, Jack Warner had found his new team. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't a male-female team. It was his new team, like Hope yeah. and Crosby. It was Green Street and Laurie. Now, yeah. here's, the many... funny, here's the funny part about Casablanca. They never appear in a scene together. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> And, and and Peter, I don't think I'm I don't think I'm ruining the movie for people who have not seen it. But Peter Laurie gets killed off pretty early in Casablanca, so how they saw a pairing between the two in Casablanca is beyond me. But they did. <laughs> how many films did the two uh, Green Street and Peter Laurie do together? Do you know? They did seven films together in in uh, written dramas, and then they also appeared. In one of those, um, you know, those war bond kind of films where, you know, they would appear in moments to kind of cheer up the troops, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. It was one yeah. of those things that would feature Anne Sheridan and Errol Flynn and Jack sure. Carson and Humphrey Bogart. And, and, and Sidney Greenstreet and Peter Laurie appeared together. And, and the movie was Thank, Thank Your Lucky Stars. So they, they were able to appear together in that movie, but it was they, they appeared as themselves. That was the thing. Yeah. They were playing themselves. But the other movies, like Three Strangers, which is just a fabulous film, in which there are two of three strangers who come across uh, a, 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 a horse racing ticket, and they, 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 they put in their money for the ticket, and unfortunately, one of the actors needs the money back because they've kind of overextended themselves through some shady dealings. And so there the drama goes. And a another of the actors uh, is, is, is being chased for the murder of a police officer. So there's a lot of intrigue going on. But at the very end, you know, we find out if they win with the, with the, with the horse racing ticket or not. And, it, and it's uh, Three Strangers is a really, really wonderful film. Uh, and and that's one that you really you, you shouldn't miss. And of course, they were often again paired with Humphrey Bogart and Claude Rains and maybe lesser known features like Action in the North Atlantic. I mean, we all remember Maltese Falcon and Casablanca. We don't necessarily remember Action in the North Atlantic. And right. uh, there they are again, um, Sidney Greenstreet, the villain in this piece. But uh, Claude Rains returns, and 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 Peter Laurie is the friend to, to Humphrey Bogart. So there are uh, Passage to Marseille is another one. A great film, so there there are there are some really marvelous films that that, um, that Gr Green Street and Laurie did together. Laurie was the more accomplished actor, been a, an actor longer. Uh, Green Street's career was only eight years. He became an actor at the age of sixty-four. No Unfortun wow. Yeah, no, unfortunately, he only made a handful of films, maybe twelve films, thirteen films, something like that. All he memorable. Yeah, yeah, he d he developed diabetes in the late nineteen forties, and by nineteen fifty-four, he was dead. Wow. Oh, that's too bad. That's yeah. too, how long was Peter Laurie's career? He he appeared. Way longer. For yeah, years. thirty thirty year career. Yeah. Uh, and he and of course he became rather famous for the the fact that even though he was a, a little guy, he could play these really weaselly evil parts. And of course he would caricature himself. Warner Brothers would draw caricatures of, of Peter Laurie and feature them in their Bugs Bunny movies. Right. I was and, uh, he yeah, just, and then he gained weight. And once he gained weight. Uh, he was giving, uh, given more uh, sedate roles. He made a, a quick appearance in Around the World in 80 Days uh, as, a, as a, a ship's uh, award, you know, where they pass out towels and things like that. Mm -hmm. And he appeared also with Walter Pidgeon in uh, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. But he got lucky late in his life, a couple of years, right before he died, he was able to uh, uh, get together with one of Art's favorite people, Roger Corman, mm -hmm. And they were able to make um, some wonderful, creepy films. Vincent Price, Basil Rathbone, Boris Karloff, and Peter Laurie. And these were kind of tongue-in-cheek, um, bloody things that were based on uh, the titles of Edgar Allan Poe, 
uh, right. uh, novels like like The Raven, mm. yeah, or Murder in, uh, in Rue Morgue, or you know things like Comedy of Terror, Tales of Terror, and yeah. they were just kind of lightweight fare that Roger Corman was really well known for. But you know the standout in all of these, even though Vincent Price was the star, uh, Peter Lorre. Um, he really was the comedic standout in these in these pieces. I mean, just absolutely wonderful. I, I, just so wonderful. He was a great character actor. I always love uh, seeing him. And of course, he he had that unique accent and way of talking. And he was short and uh, uh, kind of menacing looking. He, you know? he looked he looked the role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was he was very memorable. You, you knew. And he was easy to imitate, as you Yes, mentioned. he was. He was very easy to imitate. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's really been amazing? Uh, Manny, we've done about uh, uh, 30 or more episodes together. I don't know how many. Almost uh, 50, but that's okay. Who's counting? Uh, who's counting? Uh, <clears throat> but like, who's counting 50? Uh, and Manny knows that. Um, there are a lot of episodes that we figure out in advance. You know, we'd like to talk about this. Labor Day's coming up or something. We do that. This one just popped up. Okay. I no know. Script. Okay. We just, and Bonnie said, okay, let's go. Peter Lurie. Yeah, I could do something on that. <laughs> and let me, let me just, if, if I may offer one more little anecdote. Um, Vincent Price and Peter Lurie was such close friends that they attended the funeral of Bella Lugosi together. Wow. And uh, um, they were there. The, the casket was open before they were going to close the casket and they were going to bury um, Bela Lugosi in his cape, by the way, his Dracula cape. He actually wore his Dracula cape when he was buried. And uh, they were standing there uh, at the funeral site, at the uh, at the, the burial site. And Peter Lorre turns to Vincent Price and say, um, you think we can stick a stake in him just to make sure? <laughs> <laughs> now, is that a true story? And Vincent Price was just aghast by that guy. He was like, what? <laughs> but that's the kind of sense of humor that Peter Lorre had. And, and uh, he lived to be uh, something like 58. He died in 1964. Mm -hmm. um, he, was, he was a really fun kind of guy. One of those, his last appearances was on the Jack Benny program. And of course, Jack feigned fear that you know the scary Peter Lorre was on his show, and it was all in fun. I think I think Peter Lorre was one of those decent guys who loved to make fun of himself, and it played well to audiences. And I think audiences could sense that, and that's what makes him a really memorable actor, and makes him a really decent human being, which I'm I'm happy to say. So and we often we often forget as viewers as fans that actors are portraying somebody else. Mm -hmm. Who we see on the screen is not who they are. Right. I, there are the rare exceptions, mm -hmm. but most of the time, people like Peter Lorre is nothing like his screen portrayals. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. He was just he he was fun. You, you always knew when he was there. He would he would just he was a scene stealer of the first yeah. order. <laughs> the one thing though, I think that uh, we can agree on that this is the real Manny Pacheco. <laughs> okay. Okay. What a scene see? stealer it's, of the first order. Yes. Well, I don't think sure. you're, I don't think you got the reasonable facsimile if that's what you're alluding to. No, I did. No, I'm the real deal. <laughs> yes. You are. Uh, Banny is the real deal, and uh, it's always great to talk to you. And uh, just, I'm still stunned that Peter Lorre. Okay. And there you go. So, is there anybody you don't know something about? Think about it, and then we'll have to have you do some research and then, but I don't think there's almost anybody that you don't know something about that you couldn't do five minutes on. I don't know that I could do a whole 30 minutes or 15 minutes on Art Kirsch, but that's just, a, that's something I'm going to have to do a lot of well, research you can on. Just, you yeah. can just look at my room we got the, uh, at the monitor. <laughs> With that, thank you very much. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. You bet. Thank you, Manny. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.